Hey everyone, so this video is going to talk about perpendicular bisectors and how we're going to construct the perpendicular bisectors of each of the three sides of a triangle. Prior to that though, let's take a look at what a perpendicular bisector means. So it's going to be essentially a special kind of segment ray or line that does two things. First, it must be perpendicular, which again means it intersects a given segment at a 90 degree angle. The second part of the definition is that it is a bisector. And what does that mean? Well, it means it passes through the given segment's midpoint. So the term perpendicular bisector, each of the two words basically tells you the two requirements that you need for constructing one of these. So let's take a look at a triangle and how we would do this on our own, okay? So basically the first thing you need to do is look at the bisector portion of this definition. So I'm going to need to look at all three sides of my triangle and find where my midpoint is. The best thing to do here is when constructing your triangle, look at which you can either use centimeters or inches, whichever one's going to give you a better approximation to where the center is at. So for example, this segment here on the triangle is just about nine inches. So that means that my midpoint is going to occur right at the four and a half inch mark. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point there. Okay. Now, what we need to do now is draw a line that is perpendicular to this segment and it must intersect at its midpoint, thus bisecting it. So the best way to do this, the easiest way, is to look at a protractor. The protractor, what's nice about it is the dot right here is going to be the point or vertex that you need to use to measure. Well, the 90 degree mark is marked straight up and down right here, and this would, of course, be the side. So the perpendicular angle is literally going to be this upside down T that's on the protractor. So if I line up my protractor so that the green dot lines up there, I'm just going to need to adjust this a bit. I'll put a little mark right there, marking that that right there, that little segment my pen is tracing over is going to be perpendicular. Now I can take my ruler out and thus connecting these, I'm going to draw in my segment. Okay. So this right here, this green line that I've drawn in, is the perpendicular bisector. Note that it does not have to go through the opposite vertex uh, to consider to be a perpendicular bisector. The only requirements are that it must bisect the side and it must be perpendicular. So what I went ahead and did here is I constructed the other two perpendicular bisectors of my triangle. So this was the first one we did together. I found the other midpoint, drew a perpendicular line, found my other midpoint, drew another perpendicular line. And what ends up happening is, and this should be happening with yours, is that all three perpendicular bisectors are all going to meet in this one place right here. By definition, that's what's called a point of concurrency. And so the three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle will create a point of concurrency uh, where all three are going to meet. The name that we are going to associate with that is called the circumcenter. And so the circumcenter says by definition, that it's the point of concurrency of the three perpendicular bisectors of the triangle. Now, one interesting fact, and this is another good way to check um, your accuracy when you're creating this yourself, is that the circumcenter actually ends up being equidistant, which means the same distance from all three vertices of your triangle. So going back to my drawing here, what I can actually do is take my ruler and use the, I'll use the centimeter side here, and see that, for example, let me put it on the screen all the way, ends up being about 11 and a half centimeters from the point of concurrency to the vertex. If I look at this, I'm going to get just about the same. It looks like it might be off by, or oh, I'm actually, I'm not measuring it right. I'm starting at the point of concurrency. There it is at 11 and a half again. And likewise, the final point of concurrency here is also going to be 11 and a half centimeters as well. So try this out with yours as a good way to check uh, on the accuracy of your perpendicular bisectors. Be sure to draw these in pencil first before you uh, color them over with a color pencil or a pen or a marker or something like that, just in case you do need to make any adjustments.